Hello, everyone. Welcome to Week 15 and to this edition of Rams Revealed, presented by NFL All Day. I'm your host, J.B. Long. The Rams travel to Green Bay this week to face the Packers, and we're excited about our guest, second-year receiver, Tutu Atwell. How you doing, Tutu? I'm great. How you doing? Doing really well. Been looking forward to this for a long time. First, how was your long weekend after beating the Raiders? Uh, it, went, it was it was, it was was cool, man. I went um, back home to Miami, got some time to spend with my family, and came back uh, Saturday night, and now we're here. Awesome. So you made a, a mini buy out of it. We always hear that the yeah, Thursday the, night game kind of presents a mini buy, but you put it to mini good buy, use. Yep. Your timing's superb. You missed a terrible weekend weather-wise here in Los Angeles. Well, so It usually rained down in Miami, so I caught a little good time to go down there. So Amazing. Um, this is, I think, the easiest NFL all-day play of the game in show history. Mm -hmm. And I just told you a minute ago that each week we do this, we ask you to kind of relive the best moment from the previous game. Uh, the previous week. It has to be Baker to Van, doesn't it? The 23 yeah. yard game winner against the Raiders. And Tutu, I noticed you were like literally the closest Ram to him mm -hmm. as that route developed. So give it to us through your vantage point. Uh, pretty much, uh, Coach, uh, Coach Matt Vay called a um, four, uh, four verts place. Um, Van had a go ball. Um, it was too high safety, and the safety rolled down um, and to cover me. And it was just one on one with Van, and I just seen the ball in the air. And I just already knew Van was going to get it and run up under it. So when he caught it, it was just like, let's go, man. So and we was all inside. I was happy for him. And it was a great game. Yeah, you were the first to celebrate with him. We all know Van's journey and what it's taken for him to get back on the field this season. How much do you think that moment meant to him and, and to your entire locker room to break that six-game losing streak? Uh, it, it meant a lot to him uh, the most. Um, just coming off an injury. I won't say injury because he played the whole season, but just coming off surgery and just having knee problems. So it's tough, I man. It's a challenge. So for him to make that play, it was pretty. It probably hit home for him. How about some context on what Baker Mayfield and the Rams did last week? He's your fourth quarterback in live action this season, right? Mm -hmm. Two days prep to play like that. Have you ever seen anything like it? No, nah, I've never seen nothing like it. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Um, he came in, came in ready to learn, ready to throw. We had one practice he threw to all of us. We got time it down. It was just quick. It happened like magic. <laughs> so one practice. How many footballs do you think you legitimately caught from here out here on the practice field before getting on the bus and going to the game? Uh, I want to say probably about like it wasn't that because it wasn't it wasn't like a full practice. So it was a practice, but it was like a little walkthrough. So we caught like probably like thirty balls. And how many of those went to you? Um, we had we had different like time, probably like five four. Okay, so you've caught like five. Yeah, but everybody passes. had their own Pacific route we ran to mm -hmm. get timing down. So that's what we did, pretty much did like. But, I mean, all of them was dots and lasers. So. And then pregame at SoFi, what, another dozen yeah, or something another, going through? Yeah, another couple balls. So. What was that like in the huddle, like looking up and seeing a new face, hearing a new voice? Man, we were just excited. We were ready to go, man. Just, just by seeing him throw the ball, we know he could throw. Good, good quarterback. He could, he could run it all as well. And um, we were just ready to get to it. Before that final 98-yard drive, I wondered out loud on the air, like I wonder how many Rams in the huddle right now, Baker actually knows their name. Do you think for sure he knew Tutu Atwell and could have identified you? Yes. Before um, that game. Yes, of course. Okay, um, you got to like introduce yourself. You had yes, a conversation. Yes, um, yeah, we um had a conversation. We um, introduced ourselves. Um, when he came out, introduced myself as well. Um, so I mean, I'm quite sure he knew all the receivers and you know, all. Everybody knows. He uh, quick, so it's he learned quick. He learned lineman. quick. He learned. He's the, <laughs> he learned very quick. So I'm I'm quite sure he, learned, he knew all our names. I just think of like the off season program when you all have like your names like taped on the helmet. <laughs> <laughs> like still getting to learn each other. So yeah. that was like his uh, two-day training camp. What will this week be like, Tutu, by comparison? Not just for him, but for your entire offense to kind of get in sync, to learn what he does best, and for him to learn what you all do best. I mean, I'm pretty much just it, just practice. This week of practice, we have a good week of practice. And just pretty much just get to know each other more and get timing down and him knowing the more plays and just pretty much just coming together as a family. So as long as we do those things, we should be great. How about for you? This must be really enjoyable to finally be playing in the National Football League, to be starting a second-year pro, a former second-round pick. Where yeah. are you at? It's, I'm, I'm awesome in life right now, man. Um, just getting the opportunity to show everybody and the fans what I can do, and that's play football and catch the ball. Uh, I was just telling a couple, uh, couple of my friends back home, like, man, because I played the whole game. I'm like, man, playing the whole game in NFL and college is a big difference. It's a way big difference. How so? so? Just the... The timing, the speed of the game, and just everything. So I was just telling them guys that, just joking around about it. But um, I'm great, and it, and it feels great to, to be playing this league and hoping to play longer. 
And it had been a few years, right, since you went like full conditioning. I imagine yes. like game day, 60, 70 snaps feels a lot different. Yes. Um, I jotted down these comments from Sean McVay from, I think, a week ago. Of course, he's being asked, like, what took so long? You know, why hasn't mm-hmm. Tutu gotten his chance before this? Why haven't we seen this before for the Rams? Here was his answer. I want to get your reaction to it. Last year was, of course, more of a result of your injury mm-hmm. and the depth that the Rams ended up having at that position. This year, he, Tutu, probably should have gotten more opportunities earlier on in the season. And that's something that I won't run away from because mm-hmm. all this guy has done is answer the bell when he has had his chances. What's it feel like to hear that from your head coach? I mean, uh, Coach Medvedev is a good person, man. I, I, I believe and trust him. So, I mean, it may be something he saw, but it was my job to do what I had to do when it's my time to be played, and I did that. Have you done something different, better this season to lead to this <coughs> opportunity? Uh, no, not 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 really. Uh, just hard work and dedication. Um, working with Coop um, all season, pretty much. That was a that was a big big step. Um, I don't know if you heard, but um, actually after the season last year, I text Cooper like telling him that I wanted to get better, and pretty much just I want to be a a, a big time receiver. And so I took um, we took I took a hand of myself and we got together all season, worked out, did some field work, and I just worked out with him the whole the whole off season, as well. I was getting my rehab in, and I just took that and took all the key points and coaching points from him, and just pretty much just put it in my game as well, and. And it looked like it's paying off. I'm glad you said that because as I watched Mike'd up with Van Jefferson from last week, mm-hmm. I couldn't believe how much of a coach Cooper was during that Raiders game. Yeah. Like with the tablet in his hand, how valuable are his tips, whether it be in an OTA session or within the four quarters at SoFi Stadium? Man, it, it's, it's kind of it's, it's funny because Coop, that's, 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 that's just the type of person he is. So and even in the meeting room, he coached the meetings. He goes to meetings. He goes to meetings. He sometimes he goes to meetings. Like, I mean, it's just a, he's a great person. And um, even on the field, I, I'm like, hey, I even ask A. Rob or Stafford to look at me while I'm on the field. And after that play or that drive, I asked him, hey, did you see that? What what could I could've, what I could have did? Or uh, even on the um, when I had the stunt route, I asked Coop. I'm like, hey, Coop, man, he playing outside. What should I do? And he's like, okay, do this. Why not slip him? Get back to your landmark. And I did it, and then that's when I caught the little pre- the pressure out. And you just got to play with it and mix it up with these guys. So, I mean, he has some good tips to give me, mm-hmm. and I'm g- grateful and glad that he's on my team. That's awesome. I mean, he and Sean have way different personalities, different deliveries, but I feel like their football brains are almost clones yeah. of each other. Are there similarities between those two and the way they see the game? They both smart persons, man. <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's kind of it's kind of wild, man. Um, Coach Matt Vega, he, can, he memorized everything. He memorized stuff that I didn't call it. I'm like, how you re- how you still remember? How you know that? And he just, he's just a good coach, man. And he knows everything. And I think Coops, that's the same as well. Hmm. When you were going through that experience of being a healthy scratch, so you lean on Coop during the off season. Anyone in this facility that like helped you get through? I don't want to say the darker times, but you know what I mean. The moments of patience where you had to uh, wait to know and believe that your time was coming. Uh, Van Jefferson. Um, you know. He we kind of he I don't want to say he kind of went through it last year, but uh, it was a point in time he wasn't playing, yeah. and he was like, "Hey man, just you know, stay strong. Time will come when your opportunity comes, then you take advantage of it." I mean, he wasn't playing once in a time, but when his time came, he took advantage of it, and I just took it in and you know, talked to myself and prayed. I have uh, also had people praying for me, my mom, friends as well. So I mean, every I leave everything in God's hands. Yeah. Let's talk a bit more about your mom there. You've referenced her a couple of times. She seems like a very influential force in your life. What's her name and what she meant to your development? Uh, my mom's uh, when I'm, my mom's name is Lakia Fersher. Um, that's like my best friend. We do everything together. I tell her everything. Nobody know nothing about me but my mom. I tell her everything. I go for her to everything. And it's just, that's who I go to. That's who I call every day. I can't go a day without talking to her. How many of your uh, games, your moments, has she been able to witness in person? Uh, she came to the Tampa Bay game. That's okay. the only that's the only game she came to this year. Close cause, to home. Because um, I have two brothers still at home. Well, one is in the LSU in college, but I have to look. I have a little brother that she gotta take care of and um, get ready for school and everything like that. Awesome. So she caught your first NFL touchdown 
in New Orleans on TV then, right? Or on social no, media? No, she wasn't there. My little, my brother that's in college, he was in there because he go to LSU. Perfect. So he caught it in live. But she she be walking she be watching on TV. Her and my um family. Let's double up on then the uh, NFL All Day Player of the Game. Let's go back to New Orleans. Okay. Tell me about that first NFL touchdown. What did that feel like to finally get in the end zone? Uh, it was great, man. Um, <clears throat> I have some um, people back home like, man, why you ain't dance? Why you do a dance? And I'm like, man, it happened too fast. <laughs> I was just excited, but um, came in motion. Had one of the nickels on me, and I, I just told Stafford knew I was gonna run. I just I tell him every time, man, I'm gonna run. I'm gonna get it. Just put it out there. And he trusts me. I trust him. He did it, and I went to go get it. I thought you had your second against the Seahawks, too. Are you telling me there would have been a better celebration, a more choreographed dance ready for that one? Oh, yeah, it would have been a better celebration. Okay, so I, I was going to ask, like, how anxious, having felt that feeling, are you to get back in the end zone? Maybe as soon as Lambeau Field this weekend. Now I want it even more for you because I know there's something ready to roll. Yeah, I got some. I got some on my sleeve for y'all. I, I got some. I got to be honest. I'm, I'm, I'll be on TikTok trying to see which TikTok days I'm going to do. Okay, there you go. <laughs> some inspiration. Yeah. Uh, I have to tell you, though, I think the one-handed catch against Seattle, even though it wasn't a touchdown, was mm. actually my favorite play you've made so far. Yeah, man. Um, I just focus on the ball, man. You know, my motto, um, my motto every day before I go on the field, even in practice, I talk to myself like, All right, let's go, man. All catches, no drops. And I just stick with that throughout the whole game. Like, even when the ball come my way, try to come my way. If it's catchable, my dad, uh, my dad tell me, if it's catchable, you better catch it. So I just take that and, you know, I just take it in. Like, okay, that ball coming to me, I'm going to catch it. Your dad was a great receiver himself in college at Minnesota? Yes. Is that right? Yes. So I was going to ask, like, who do you model your game after? Good tape on your dad still or someone else more he, recently um, that you? He's, um, my dad, He I, I used to watch film on him. He was a good receiver, good all-around receiver. But I want to say he, he modeled his game after me. <laughs> <laughs> who else though who do you like but, to study um, who you like to watch draw inspiration from? i like i like watching i like watching tyreek hill they got to be able to run like sub four four right yeah i like i like watching tyreek hill also i like watching um lockett mm -hmm. and i know i ain't a big receiver but i like jamar chase game who doesn't yeah he's awesome <laughs> will fantasy footballers be drafting tutu out well next summer you think oh of course of course i love it I love it. Um, since you mentioned your father, let's go there next. You've been here two seasons, too, too, but I feel like I still don't know you that well. Maybe mm -hmm. our audience does, but uh, I've been looking forward to this because you're someone that I want to know more about. Right. Um, help me with your first given name. So my first given name is Shatarius, middle name Antoine Atwell Jr. But you've always been Tutu. I've always been Tutu. Does anyone call you anything other than Tutu? My mom called me Tuda. T-U-D-A. T-U-D-A. Tuda. So that's her special privilege. Yeah, she didn't want nobody calling me Tutu. What about like when you're in trouble? Did she ever use your full no. given name? Only person that uses my full given name when I'm in trouble is my grandma. Your grandmother, okay. Uh, you just turned 23 right yes. in October. Belated happy birthday. You grew Appreciate up in it. South Florida. Yes, sir. So Miami-Dade County Player of the Year as a senior. That's big stuff. There's good football down there, yeah. of course. But you were a four-year starter at quarterback? Yes, sir. So you can spin it. Yes, I still got it. All right, so I've seen some other Rams, including Cooper and OBJ, throw the football around here. Mm -hmm. But you might be the next guy. Oh, yes, 100%. Double up on a pass? 100%. Okay. We, gonna, we, we, we got in the back pocket. We ain't going to show it. See, everybody don't know that right now, so only you guys know that, so don't tell nobody. Which route do you throw best, do you think? Like who? I can throw all of them. All right. Throw the full route tree. I love it. But you switched to receiver at Louisville, of course. Yes. You go on to lead the ACC in receiving before you're done there. Have you always been the fastest player on the field? Yes, 100%. So I was going to ask, like, what it's like to run 21 miles per hour, but you don't know any different, right? Like, that's just your state of no. being. Actually, um, when I was in Louisville, I, the top, my top was 24. What? Wait, hold on. 24. That's, like, not even been registered. We don't see that. With a football All in right. your hands? No, I wasn't in football. It okay. wasn't, well, I don't even say it. it wasn't in football, but that's the top I had at 20, um, in Louisville. Amazing. Rust Yeast was your... Uh, college teammate, teammate too, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, he enjoyed uh, reflecting on some of your time there together. Man, that guy hits. He's like the he next gonna bring Nick it. Scott for this. Yeah, uh, he's, he's, he's going to bring it. He's a great player, man. Before I forget about speed, okay, formulate a Rams 4x100 team for me. 4x1? <clears throat> You're running the anchor, right? You can put me wherever. Okay. But give me the three other guys that you would want to Okay, but I'm going to take, I'm gonna take Van, Van Jefferson. I might take Van Jefferson to start it off. He's going to be the first leg. Oh, who was? Oh, Jalen. I'm gonna put Jalen. I'm gonna put Jalen second leg. Okay. So Van gonna start it off. Jalen second leg. Who a good curve runner? 
Who's fast? We gonna have to see. We gonna have to do tryouts for the third leg. <laughs> okay, I leave that open. I could run four. I could run either one. So we could really play around with it. You know who I, thinks he deserves a spot from who? my previous conversation? Kobe Durant. Kobe fast too. Kobe, Kobe fast. He's but we, we got a lot of fast. Oh, my, I got a third leg. I'm gonna run third leg. Okay. Jalen gonna run second leg. Van gonna run first leg. And I'm gonna put Scooter on the fourth leg. Oh, that's a good call. Yeah. So you got some long striders there. You got big defensive backs. Yep. Okay, I like that. Because Jalen gonna give it to me. I'm gonna put the gap, and I'm gonna get Scooter the the lead race, and Scooter fast already, so nobody not gonna catch Scooter, so he gonna just bring it home. Let him bring it home. Awesome. Uh, total left turn here, but as I'm trying to get to be prepared for this interview, I'm researching a lot of things in your past. Mm -hmm. I want to know more about Warriors of Liberty City. I was not aware this is a 2018 TV series. Yes. Um, so I'll read the quick description, then you fill in the blanks. Okay. Luther Campbell, best known as a political activist, leader of uh, hip hop group Two Live Crew. Uh, but to the young football players he mentors in Florida, he answers to Uncle Luke. Luke. Uncle so Luke. this is a docu series about a season with the Liberty City Warriors. You yes. go from there. Uh, just pretty much, um, it's a documentary of the inner city uh, where I grew up at, Liberty City. Um, the Optimus Club was Liberty, called Liberty City Warriors. Something where I started playing football yeah, at four years old, and um, <clears throat> just it's a lot. It, it was rough coming up. Just. In the inner city, where's the park? Where the park located at? A lot of uh, shootings and gang, and gang violence, and any, everything you can picture. Of. And um, Uncle Luke, he wanted to stop all that, so he came up with this Optimus Club. Everybody was playing football, you know. Everybody, all the, you know, everybody just playing football, and you got cheer, you got baseball, you got basketball, whatever. So um, I played that my whole life. I played. I started as quarterback, and it just went all the way up. And then um, I want to say, well, on my 12th grade year of high school, um, they came up with the the show, the documentary, and I was one of the main characters. And uh, I ain't gonna lie, I wasn't familiar with cameras. Like I was like camera shy, and I, I could really say it helped because now I'm just like I'm used to the cameras. So it was a big part of help, but uh, it was a great show. I wanted to finish it. In college, but I couldn't because we wasn't able to get money and stuff like that. So now I'm thinking about just bringing it back right now since we get paid. So yeah, might as well. The NIL yeah. era just missed there, right? Yes, yeah, so I thinking mean about for those who uh, haven't seen it, maybe like me or unaware, uh, season one, episode two. Here's the description: Two Two Atwell in Miami Northwestern's quest to win a state championship is interrupted when everyone's focus is pulled away from football as Hurricane Irma approaches, threatening historic destruction yes so that's the year you're talking about right september mm -hmm. 2017 yes and then liberty city alumni who have played in the nfl how about this list Devontae freeman antonio brown duke johnson teddy bridgewater mm -hmm. were those guys forces around your area yes uh all of us close um we grew up together i won't say grew up together because they a bit older but mm -hmm. them, them guys been there since i was little we all played on the part together the same part they could tell you about it but uh, except Teddy. Teddy went to Bunch Park. We ain't gonna speak on that. But he know he know what, what home's at. But um, yeah, them whole bunch of great guys. I'm glad I asked because you talked about your parents and the <coughs> other forces in your life. It seems like this uh, Liberty City Club was really influential in who you are today. Yes. Including you being Hollywood before you even got to Hollywood. Yeah, hundred <laughs> <laughs> yeah, percent. Great. Uh, let's turn our attention to a much colder place. Week 15, Lambeau Field. You were on injured reserve last year when the Rams went, right? Yes. Were you on the plane? Did you stay back? I stay. I was home. I was okay. Home. So you've never been? Never been. Historic place. It's going to be cool. I'm looking forward. I heard. But I heard really it's cold. Cold. What have you been told so far about temperature? It's going to be too cold. They say the temperature changes. They say it's going to be negative one. It's going to be snowing. It's going to be eight. But I went to Louisville, and Louisville got cold as well. But I don't know if it might top that cold. So What's we'll the see. coldest football game you can remember playing in as a Miami native? In Miami or Just college? anywhere. Probably a Louisville. Louisville, when we played against um, Kentucky. It was my, I think, junior year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, junior year. It was cold and windy and raining. That's the coldest game I ever played in. Louisville's got what, Cincinnati bowl game? Cincinnati, Did I yes. see that right coming up yes. soon? All right. Let's finish with three and out. I told you about this segment that we close every Rams Revealed podcast with. Uh, the game is, if you get these final three questions correct, I'll make a donation to the LA Rams Foundation on your behalf too, gotcha. too, okay? Appreciate your time. Uh, so while you were off this weekend, I wonder if you saw maybe the highlight of the NFL season. You know who Panay Sewell is? 
big offensive lineman for the Detroit Lions. Didn't see his game clinching catch. Oh yeah, 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 yep, yep. Big three hundred and thirty five. Came in motion. There and, you go. And got the first down. Okay, yep. so given your background, I wanted you to break that down for us. Six foot five, kind of jet motion, game clinching catch. What'd you make of his skills? Future as a tight end or no? Him? Yes. Yes. He, hey, he's, he could he, he could play tight end. Great. I mean, because he, he kind of did your job. You good wouldn't want to do his job, exactly. right? You wouldn't want to anchor down against an edge that's, rusher. That, that's impressive, actually. <laughs> okay. Didn't mean to put you on the spot there. Yeah. <laughs> now I know that you were having a good time with your family. You were disconnecting from football yeah. because that one barely crossed your radar. But I seen it. I, you know, I keep updating the phone. I thought someone might have had it on film in the media room or something. <laughs> uh, one thing I do know, that this is a comfort zone for you, your love of gaming, right? Yes. Is there anyone in this Rams facility who can rival you when it comes to Call of Duty or whatever your game of choice might be? Nobody. Nobody? I'm top dog. Has that been proven or you just, like, no one even wants to challenge you? Check out my TikTok and you will you see. Which is? The 2-2 two -two at will on okay. TikTok. Prolific gamer, right? Prolific. Favorite thing to do away from football? Yes, that's the only thing I do. I don't go out. You won't, I go out here and there, but you won't, I'm a gamer. I okay. play the game 24-7. Even when I, when I leave, I go play the game. What about Madden? I play Madden. I got. I don't have to play Madden like that. I, I'm good at Madden, but I don't have to play it. Cool. Two down, one to go. Last question here for two two Atwell. With Christmas around the corner, anything on your wish list? Me, you know, it's funny. My mom asked me the same thing, and I told her nothing. But I'm just gonna give away. I'm just gonna give away uh, toys. I'm having a toy drive for Christmas. That's gonna be my Christmas gift for myself. Toy drive down in Liberty City area. Um, my mom, she like my manager, so she runs everything down there when I'm home. When I'm not home, her and my auntie. So I'm going to let those, them guys. It, well, we play on Christmas as well. Mm -hmm. So I let my mom and my family handle the things down there. Tutu, thank you for taking the time. Thank Wish you. you a great week ahead and a long, successful career in the National Football League. The next Tutu Atwell touchdown, the celebration will be TikTok worthy. Oh, and I got another thing. Yes. My foundation page. She run my foundation page, too, at uh, Tutu Atwell Foundation. So you go on my Instagram. You go on the Instagram and you can follow. Did youth camp this off season? My memory is kind of triggering now. Didn't you do something in your neighborhood this off season? Yes, I did a turkey giveaway. I did Easter. I did all types of stuff. I Good for it. you, man. So Keep it up. Appreciate it. That's Thanks awesome. for having me. Glad to know Tutu Atwell better. Glad to have the Rams back in the win column as they go to Green Bay. For Tutu, I'm JB. This is Rams Revealed, presented by NFL All Day.